Welcome to the Career Change Podcast, where you'll discover the frank and practical advice and resources that are already proven to work in the real world when it comes to changing careers or figuring out what business is right for you when you are a smart but likely also stuck, overwhelmed, or overthinking person in your mid 30s, your 40s, your mid 50s. I'm your host, Ricky Hansen, a career change advisor, entrepreneur, and former corporate HR professional with over 15 years' experience of helping thousands of people just like you identify or create careers or businesses that are both meaningful and future-proof. Welcome home. Hey, it's Ricky Henson here and welcome to episode two of the Career Change Podcast. This episode is going to be all about what to do when you have too many ideas or too many passions. How do you figure out which one or which ones are best for you, most suited for you when it comes to changing careers or starting the right business? I really want to dedicate this particular episode to what I call the overwhelmer type You know, the multi-passionates, because over the last 15 years in my career change consultancy, I really noticed a distinct increase in the amount of people coming my way who feel totally overwhelmed by too many passions or too many ideas, and they don't know what to focus on. And what therefore often ends up happening if they don't get help is that they end up staying stuck in jobs or careers or businesses that they've totally outgrown, that they are stuck in, that they might even hate for way too long. And also in the process, they might kill off their creative or entrepreneurial spirit because they don't seem to be able to pick or choose or commit or get traction with any of their many ideas. Now, if that description sounds familiar to you, welcome home. Keep listening. Not only will I share one of my best decision-making tools with you, and by the way, don't worry if the word decision makes you really freak out. This is about getting clarity and focus, okay? So don't worry. Not only will I share one of my best decision-making tools with you, but I would also really help you appreciate just what a gift ideation actually is. But more importantly, how to make it work for you rather than letting idea overwhelm being the biggest self-tabotage pattern that you have that's holding you back from creating a career or business that you are absolutely going to love. Also, even if you don't feel like the overwhelmer type, or even if you wouldn't describe yourself as multi-passionate, keep listening because in this episode, you will learn how to decide what to focus on and which of your ideas to start test driving. So you can also get out of overwhelm and into action. And who doesn't need more of that, right? If you've already listened to episode one of the Career Change Podcast, which was all about how this podcast can help you change careers or start the right business, then you'll remember that we talked about the things that get in the way. By the way, if you haven't listened to episode one, it's required listening. So make sure you listen to it. You can do it after you listen to this episode. But we have really talked about that one of the most important things to be aware of if you want to change careers or figure out what the right business is for you to start, then we need to identify those things you might be doing right now that really get in the way of you doing what you really want to do. And that's especially true for the overwhelmer types because you can have the best frameworks, the best strategies, but if you don't stop getting in your own way by learning how to refocus and stop some of your overwhelmer self-sabotage, patterns, then you won't get unstuck. So this is a really important podcast episode that literally has the power to change everything for you. And I'm not saying that lightly, but I do have over 15 years experience of advising a lot of overwhelmers, a lot of multi-passionates when it comes to figuring out how to change careers or what the right business is for them. But not just that, I also have a lot of understanding and a real deep compassion for overwhelmers because it can be so exhausting and it can be so hard and you can feel so misunderstood. And right up front, this is so important, let me tell you, I know this from experience, there is nothing wrong with you and you don't have to change who you are, Sigh, right? The issue is the number of ideas and the overwhelm that you allow them to create in your head and in your life. The issue is how you literally allow them to dictate you and distract you. The ideas and the number of ideas are the problems and the way that you think that they're all created equal, that's important to change because not 
all ideas are created equal. They're not all important. So don't let that trip you up. There is such a big difference between you liking the idea of something and being attracted to that idea of something and figuring out what the reality, the concrete reality of what that particular idea would result in if you were to turn that into a job or a business, i.e. what would that job description on day-to-day life in a day end up being like and what kind of life would it result in? <laughs> Can you see? Not all ideas are created equal. They're sold in very different day-to-day lives. So we need to get you out of that blind attraction phase, like vague idea phase, and into the real-life feedback and interaction phase as soon as possible. So it's not just the idea of, but knowing what the reality of turning that idea or passion into a career or business would be like. Okay, not all ideas are created equal or will give you the same kind of lifestyle or day-to-day work experience, i.e. some of them wouldn't be right for you, probably most of them, where some of them are the gold nuggets that you just need to identify. But let's make sure we're on the same page. So let me define a little bit deeper what an overwhelmer is, the behaviors, the mindsets, the risks, the rewards of being one. So you can further self-identify, but Am I right? You're probably already feeling like I have a contract, probably just listen to this introduction. So, hey, you are in the right place, but most importantly, you're in good hands. I can help you. The classic overwhelmer or multi-passionate type question that I often get coming into my inbox is, hey, Ricky, I have so many passions and so many ideas. How do I know which one to pick? And also whether I'll even enjoy building a business or career around it. So that's a question I often see. And by the way, The Career Change Podcast is based on the questions that I get from my subscribers. So if you're not a subscriber to my newsletter yet, then what are you waiting for? Go over to thecareerchangepodcast.com, sign up for the newsletter. Not only will you get my best motivation, my best work, you will also have the ability to submit your questions and I'll pick the ones, the most requested ones and answer them on this podcast. So go to thecareerchangepodcast.com and sign up for that newsletter. Now, here's how you know you're an overwhelmed or multi-passionate. It's literally because your brain often feels like a popcorn machine of ideas, right? So here's a classic example that I see again. Your week probably looks something a little bit like this. It's Monday and you are super fired up about this idea for a wine business. It's going to involve loads of travel around the world and collaborations and maybe even some augmented reality. And you research that and you get really excited. Oh, this, dr- this is the answer to all of your problems. Then you wake up on Wednesday and you're like, hmm, but I also like yoga and CrossFit. And maybe a business combining those two for people who don't just want the one or the other, just like me, would be a better idea. And then by Friday, you're like, oh, but I also like healthy eating. Maybe I should start with an online course around that. By Friday night, you've pretty much given up. You're probably down the pub or you're, you know, gorging on Netflix or shopping online and you've pretty much given up. You're like, oh, I'm so exhausted. So you might spend the weekend kind of recovering by trawling social media, looking at influencer YouTube videos, and kind of at the back of your head thinking, who am I anyway to think I can do this? Or especially at my age, or I should just be lucky to have a job. It's crazy to think I can do these things. And then on Monday, after a day at work and on your commute or on in the shower, suddenly the wheel starts spinning again. You're like, hmm. How about consulting for nonprofits? And you are back on the horse again. And it sort of goes from there, idea after idea. There's that loop of starting and stopping. Isn't it just almost exhausting? Just listen to the description. If you're exhausted right now, that is why, my friend, am I inside your head? Don't worry. I can help. And I I know how hard it is, but I also know how to get you out of there. Before we go in to the decision-making tool, let's just briefly talk about, like I said, some of the things that get in the way. Because it's really important that we identify those because they really keep derailing overwhelmers. Most important, let me show you what to replace those behaviors or tendencies with so we can get you out of your head and start getting results. Number one, stop beating yourself up or wish that you were different. You do not have to try to fit into a career or a job or business that's not you. It's absolutely possible for you to create a career or business that's going to allow you to just be 
unapologetically yourself. I see so many multi-passionates, they beat themselves up. Why am I like this? Or why can I never get back together? Why don't I trust myself? Overwhelmers, creatives, multi-passionates, they often feel misunderstood alone or like the odd ones out, like a jack of all trade. People don't really see them as committed types. They feel like they have nothing to show for it. And often they also keep working on someone else's dreams because they just cannot get their own together. But this is not about changing yourself or who you are. But I really want to give you permission to just allow yourself to be you. Stop beating yourself up. Stop this self-sabotage. This is about changing the value or importance you give to all your many ideas and how you interact with them. It's so important to remember they're not all created equal. Number two, you have a gift, the gift of ideation. But how you treat that gift can result in it either becoming a liability or an asset. Here's what I mean by that. I really love working with more passionate people because they have an incredible asset potential. James Altucher, the author, wrote that ideas are the currency of the new economy. And this is so true going forward. If you know how to come up with really amazing ideas and choose the right one, turn it into reality that works for both you and the market, whether that's a portfolio career or a business, you are so incredibly placed because that's the way the world of work is going the skill of ideation is going to be just increasing in value. And it also means that being a career changer or being someone with a portfolio career or as an entrepreneur, this is the world for you. You just need to get cracking, but it needs to become an asset for you, not a liability. So here's what I mean by that. This ideation gift, this idea to come up with a lot of ideas, it is a liability if you just keep dabbling and you keep jumping from one idea to the other and think they're all equally important. That is a liability because that kind of dabbling all over the case kind of behavior tends to result in a lot of exhaustion. I often see a lot of overwhelmers with health issues or often also anxiety and depression. And often they end up not knowing how to deal with this overwhelm, all of these passions, all of this creativity by going into things like overeating or overworking or all kinds of addictions of all kinds. We probably don't need to go there right now. Let's keep it clean. But you know what I mean. In the way to go from liability to asset is to be a verb, not a noun, i.e. actually starting to behave like an entrepreneur, starting to behave like a career changer, i.e. take action, start getting out of your head, interacting with the real world and create something you can be proud of that's yours. Get real life feedback. Go from liability to execution. You know, go from that idea state and overwhelmed to actually picking something, exploring it and get real life feedback. Because if not, you might just look back at a life of what it could have been, spending your life in the corridor of possibilities, but never really opening a door, going in and creating something. Okay. Now, I did mention this before. And also just in case you're new to my work, my style is very frank and honest, but it comes from a big heart. So I am not about vague or fluffy discussions. Your life is too short. You need to get cracking. So I really want this podcast to be a, a wake up call for you to start creating, to start taking action, to get out of that unstuckness and wallowing in all of those ideas and start making your mark on the world. The worst thing you can do as a multi-passionate as an, you know, an overwhelmer is to stay in indecision and idea wallow mode and think that all of your ideas and passions are equally right for you. They are not. Give yourself the gift of making a decision. Let me say that again because it's such a beautiful phrase. Give yourself the gift of making a decision. Here's why. You can always change your mind down the line once you have actual real life feedback but not before. So let's talk about that. Remember, you can do so many things before you keel over, but not if you don't get going now. So let's talk about the biggest issue of all. And this is something I've consistently noticed over the last 15 years. I've worked one-on-one -on -one with over 700 private clients and thousands more via my online courses, via talks, via videos. And here's what I noticed again and again with you multi-passionates, with the overwhelmers. They, the biggest side-tracking, self-sabotaging tendency is this. You are very seduced by the idea of what turning that passion or that idea into a business or a career could be like, instead of first actually finding out 
and actually nailing down what the true day-to-day reality of that idea would look like, feel like, and be like if you were to turn it into a job or career or business or service offering. And that is a problem. Like I say, not all ideas are created equal or will give you the same day-to-day experience or lifestyle or money. Okay? So we've got to move you from that infatuation and idea blindness to actually finding out, well, what would the reality really be like if you were to turn that into something? Okay? So idea versus reality. How do you go from vague ideas to concrete reality so you can actually make up your mind? I think the reason why so many people are afraid of deciding is because they just haven't, because they're missing this vital step of going from vague idea to concrete reality so they actually know what the decision they're making is about. Okay? So right now, I see this again and again, if you're really fed up with a career or job or profession or business you're in right now, then it can be so easy to latch onto and glorify the ideas that you have, the passions that you have, and, and that you want to you wanna turn into something instead of actually figuring out what the reality of turning them into a job or career or business would be like. And the tool that I share with you will take care of this problem. So often I see people being so in love with the idea of what their passion could be like that they don't do the groundwork whatsoever to look into whether the idea of something actually matches the reality, right? Okay, so introducing what I name the job description test. Or you could also call it the idea clarity test, but I like the, the word job description because whether you're an entrepreneur or you have a job, we all have job description in the sense of we all have a list of things that we need to do every day, okay? So this will show you how to go from vague idea to concrete reality. And this is a tool I've developed over the last 15 years and refined. So let me take you through it because the job description test is really about finding out what you'll actually end up doing every day in your business or in your job if you were to turn that into reality, hence why I call it the job description test or the idea clarity test. I want you to write out in detail what your day-to-day, everyday life would be like if you were to turn that passion or that idea into a business or job or career i.e. go from vague idea to concrete reality. Now, I know you'll probably like, well, Ricky, I've got 500 freaking ideas and I've got 10 passions. What do I pick? Here's my advice. Just pick one for now because you'll quickly see some front runners. And then you can always run other ones through this test. You know, just, just pick one to get started. And here's a tip for picking one. Just pick the one you would most regret not doing or the one that won't go away. You can always run others through this test once you've learned the technique, okay? So don't fret. (laughs) Here's what I've seen again and again. Most people really, when it comes down to it, once you know how to identify the red threads and the themes, most people really only have two or three when it comes down to it that really matter. So action, write out in detail what your every day would look like if you were to turn that passion or idea into a business or a job or portfolio career. Who would you be exposed to on a daily basis? Who are the people that will make your life on a daily basis? What kind of clients would you be working with? How would they treat you? What do you like or don't like about them? What about colleagues if you have colleagues? Or what about collaborators? Who would they be? Write that out in detail. What experiences would you have? What products would you ship? What projects would you work on? What kind of company cultures would you be exposed to? What skills would you use? Would it be sales skills, advisory skills, consulting skills, writing skills, empathy skills, programming skills? What are the skills you would be using? And most importantly, what will your day-to-day activities actually look like? What are the most concrete things that you will be doing again and again over time on an average day? or throughout the week. So for example, in my business, I spent my days preparing for my one-to-one calls, advising people, helping them figure out how much of a change they need, and then helping them identify or design that ideal career or business. Or I design my online courses to help people do the same. I record and I spend a lot of time preparing these podcasts, recording them. I design frameworks. I do interviews, media, stuff like that. What would the thing be that if you were to turn this passion or idea into a business or job that you would be doing? Write that out in detail. 
The reality is so important here. If you're struggling with input, because this is not about you imagining it. This is about looking at job ads, looking at interviews with entrepreneurs, like day in the life of, you know, if you're struggling with vocabulary and input, then LinkedIn is a great place to start. Identify people who do those kind of jobs or identify companies and look at what is it those people say they're doing inside of those companies. There are so many entrepreneurial magazines and podcasts where you can easily find out interviews with some of your role models, some of the people who are doing these things. What do they say they're doing on an everyday basis? Everything you can do to get words, vocabularies, and insight into the real world. Now, once you've done that really good groundwork, then take a step back and take a really good honest look at what you've written. And then ask yourself, is that the day-to-day life, i.e. the job description, that I would like or not? Is this really attractive to me? Or actually, now that I've taken my passion idea of something and turned it into a reality, is that reality actually very different from what I thought it would be like? And also, what you do during the day is also going to be, what do you do throughout your entire life? What kind of life outside of work as well would this result in? Would I have any time left? Would I be able to spend time with my family? How much money would I make? And what that enable me or not to do? And does it match your values and the skills you actually want to do, what you want to do all day? Those ideas you have or what you really want to do, does it match that reality? If you do the job description test properly, you will very quickly get a yes or a yeah kind of feeling, which is always what you want to go for. And that's how you can quickly see whether you've got some really good raw material to work with, i.e. whether that passion or idea is actually worth spending more time on. And then you can potentially put a few more ideas of passion through the job description test filter. And very, very quickly will you end up with some very exciting front runners. And in the process, you will free up so much space in your head and in your energy levels. Now, once you might have found one or two front runners and there's a struggle between which one to pick, you might realize that, and I do this again with my clients all the time, that those couple of front runners, they actually have a lot of things in common. They might just be called something different, but there is a theme or red thread. So you can combine those one or two or three into a really unique business concept, an umbrella career or portfolio career, right? And what I mean by that is often... This is definitely what I recommend and what's worked best with my clients over the year. If you are the multi-passionate, if you are the overwhelmer type, then often it's a really bad idea to just rely on one job or one employer, like old school style, like in the last century. You're much better off doing this kind of portfolio career where you might be offering several things, but there is a theme that combines all of those so people are confused. Or you you start a business that will allow you to expand over time right? So that's why if you try to fit into one job, it's probably a lot of trouble for you, whereas you're probably a lot better off being an entrepreneur or someone with a portfolio career. This is why this exercise is also important because it can help you figure that out. And once you realize what the reality would be, or at least you get a better idea of it, you will just see how so many of them, that idea really didn't match the reality. If your idea, your passion doesn't pass that test, don't give it the space and the energy free it up, my friend. That's also how you're going to be a lot more focused and clear about the only few ideas or passions that truly matter. It would just be such a relief. Often my clients, they tell me, I felt like I came to you with like this massive, heavy suitcase full of all of these ideas and passions and, you know, got this job description test, got the clarity, and then I walked out with a clutch bag. (laughs) Again, give yourself the gift of making that decision, of getting that clarity. This, uh, the idea for the job description test, I got very early on when I started my business back in 2005 because I, I saw these people coming my way. Um, I have a variety of clients, but definitely the overwhelm my multi-passionates are la- probably about 45%. And I remember going to this networking event many years ago when I first started, and this was sort of gave me the, the germ of the idea. And this lady came over and she was a really smart computer programmer who worked for quite a famous company. And when she found out that I was a career change advisor and entrepreneur, she was like, ooh, you know, I, I don't tell anyone, but I would really love to transition out of my computer programmer career and start my own business as a massage therapist, you know, alternative health. And her job had been to be a computer programmer, working with really exciting programs and clients, but she really wanted to transition into becoming a massage therapist. That was what she was passionate about because her job was so busy and so stressful and she found that whenever she went to see this massage therapist, she just felt so much better and in her body, in her mind, everything. And she wanted to share that feeling. So she thought that the 
you know, solution to all her job worries was to become a massage therapist. And I was like, okay, let's just break this down. I can see why you might be attracted and latching onto this thing, but let's see if it will be right for you. So I, I, I gave her sort of a, a quick lowdown of what the exercise is about. And she really wanted a lot of intellectual stimuli, a lot of intellectual challenging problems in her career. That's what she wanted. She also liked a lot of variety, being out and about. And I was like, okay, but if you were to become a full-time massage therapist, what would your day-to-day look like? And I was like, mm, let's see it. And I can literally hear her still, well, um, you know, a, there's a dim room. And yeah, there's probably not much of an intellectual challenge. I'll be stuck in a room all day. My clients will be too sunk out from actually having a conversation. And yeah, I'm not sure. Like the intellectual stimuli is really a big issue. And I want to be out and about doing a variety of things. It probably would be quite repetitive. Now, this is an extreme example, but do you see what I'm getting at here? Be careful not to latch onto something being the saving grace for all your problems if it's not the the reality that you actually want at the other side of it, okay? Your biggest enemy is like now is likely the fact that you are so attracted to the idea of what that passion would be like turning into a business or a career that you forget to look at doing the reality check. Make sure you do the job description test and that you can then get some front runners that you can go out and test drive, Okay so important. Now, this is a lot of times what I do with my one-on-one clients. They literally come to me with all of these ideas. And what I always look for is, well, first of all, let's do the reality check, right? But then also with the ideas that you have left, what are the, the, what's the red thread? What's the commonality? What's the theme? Could you call them something else? See the word for trees. It's, as I say, often it's down to those just few things and then combining them into a really unique career or business offering for which there is also a need in the world so you'll make money with it. Like literally last week, I was in this webinar and this woman, she's like, yeah, it's all very well with all of this, but I have way too many ideas. I want to do photography. I want to do design. I want to do e-commerce. I want to do digital marketing. I want to have my own business. And I also love learning. And I was like, you know what? You actually have a theme Well, in addition to obviously, you definitely need to run your own business. She wasn't a job. But your theme is very much the visuals, the aesthetics, or the visual communication and its business. So let's start there. And she's like, wow, I never actually saw that before. Of course, it's all visual. And then let's take it from there and then pick the what's the first thing you could do. And then you can always add things on because it's an umbrella thing. But let's start with something, get it out there in the real world, get the feedback, start making the money. Then you can add second, then you can add third. Entrepreneurship and the whole idea of portfolio career is ideal for this, but only if you focus on execution as much as you do on ideation or that you hire the right people to collaborate with to help you with the finishing line, okay? This is a lot of the work that I do with my clients. Like I said, you can find out more about that over on the careerchangepodcast.com. All right, so... Did you enjoy this? I hope you're already feeling a lot more understood, but now you also have a really concrete exercise that you can go away and do to get out of that overwhelm and that frustration. If you like this, then please subscribe to the Career Change Podcast over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. And also what I would say, please write a review. If you really like this, especially this episode, and you feel like I've helped you, please write a review over on Apple Podcasts, a five-star review, because that is how this episode, this podcast will get in front of a lot more multi-passionates, a lot more overwhelmers that we can help them too. We are all in this together in this new world of work. But most importantly... Don't just listen. Don't just make this another thing that you overwhelm yourself with. Come over to thecareerchangepodcast.com and sign up for the newsletter because this podcast is all based on the questions that I get from my subscribers, the questions they're struggling with, their fears, their issues. I am always um, curating questions from my newsletter subscribers. So make sure you're on it so you can also help me decide what you want to hear about on the Career Change Podcast. So go to thecareerchangepodcast.com and sign up for the newsletter. And then just reply to any of those emails. Let me know what is it you would like seeing covered on the Career Change Podcast. Remember, you have a gift, the gift of ideation, but make sure it's an asset, not a liability. So get out of your head and start interacting with your ideas in the real life decide and then start creating that career or business that's going to be uniquely suited to you and allow you to be yourself and to actually energize you. Remember, focus actively on the things that you do have the power to do to make the rest of your life 
the best years of your work life. Let's do this together. I'll see you over at the careerchangepodcast.com. Welcome home.